During this week on the Holy Spirit, it's worth mentioning the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the fruits yesterday with Nick, and today we should talk about the gifts. So let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Ghost, creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid, and fill our hearts which thou hast made. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. We hear about these gifts all the time. I remember right before my confirmation mass, about 10 years ago, the bishop said, during my homily, I might ask you all simple questions about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and such to make sure you're ready to be confirmed. And I got great catechesis during confirmation. I felt prepared, but all of a sudden my mind just went numb. There. I was like, shoot, he's going to call on me, and I'm not going to be confirmed. And I looked around, and everyone else had that same look on their face, like, oh, shoot, everything we've learned, we forgot. And this was before the days of smartphones, where you could easily pick up the list, so we all started to talk to each other. What are the gifts? What are the gifts? Yada, yada, yada. And thanks be to God, he didn't ask us those questions, but we finally got prepared. And I remember I memorized all seven, as did everyone. And it's kind of like how we memorize the elements on the periodic table before our chemistry quiz. There were seven, we memorized them, so that way we could get confirmed, or we could get an A in chemistry class, and then forgot them. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are so, so important that that can't be our mindset, that they're just a random list of seven things that we should know. No, they're instrumental, they're so, so important. So what are they? supposed to me giving you my own creative definition or whatever I think the catechism is always the best place to turn paragraph 1830 we hear the gifts of the Holy Spirit are permanent dispositions which make us docile in following the promptings of the Holy Spirit they complete and perfect the virtues of those who receive them So they're gifts. A gift is always given by somebody. So who are these given by? They're given by God, of course. They're not just things that we can practice and get better on our own. No, God gives them to us for a reason. God doesn't just give us gifts for the sake of giving us gifts. No, he gives them to us for a very specific reason. And the catechism right there said, they complete and perfect the moral life. They help us to live. They complete and perfect the virtues. They help us to live in the world today as we should in living for heaven, our ultimate goal. There's a medieval theologian, Philip the Chancellor, who says that the gifts of the Holy Spirit prompt man and woman to reflect on God's commands and act. In other words, they help us to live. So now that we know what the point of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are, it's good to now go into them one by one and look at what they are. For each gift, I think it's also worth associating them with one saint in our tradition that really exemplified living out this gift given by God. The first gift of the Holy Spirit is wisdom. Wisdom is a term that I think we hear all the time, myself included, and often forget what it actually means. But wisdom is seeing things as they are in God's eyes. It's not an exercise of the mind, of the intellect. No, the wise person doesn't know two plus two equals four. The wise person sees things as God sees them. There's a saint, St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, for example, who's a lesser known saint. But in the last couple years of her life, she was very sick and she was dying. But she saw her sufferings as a chance to grow in union with our Lord Jesus in his suffering. And she said at the end of her life, let in light, let in life, let in love. Let me go to that light, let me go to that life. 
let me go to that love. And she understood that her suffering helped her to enter into the light, the life, and the love of Christ. That's wisdom. It's not something you read in a book. It's an experience you have with God that helps change every other experience you have in life. That's the first gift of the Holy Spirit. The second gift is understanding, which sounds a lot like wisdom, but that's the exercise of our mind, of the intellect. Understanding is using our mind to ascend to the truths of God, to the mysteries of the faith, to believe in them, like the Trinity, the Incarnation, Redemption, all that stuff. Understanding helps us to believe and to have faith. I think of St. John Henry Newman, the convert to the faith, whose intellect, whose wisdom, his education helped him to accept the truths of the faith and realize that the faith he was living, which was the Anglican faith, was great so far, but it wasn't the one true faith. And the gift of understanding helped him to realize that. The next gift of the Holy Spirit is knowledge which is seeing created things in a holy way. It's the opportunity to see created things as a way to help us reach heaven. I think of the great Saint John Paul II, who many of us remember from our own lives. And he saw created things in such a good way. We all know that image of him with his ski poles. He loved to ski, he loved to go hiking, to climb mountains. He saw these created things as a chance to bring people to God. He saw created things in a holy light, which is the gift of knowledge. The fourth gift of the Holy Spirit is counsel, which is judging right, what the right thing to do and what the wrong thing to do is in a given situation. It's not just knowing generic good or bad, but it's in this specific chance, what is right for me to do what is wrong for me to do? Which I think is many of the decisions we have to make in our life. It's never really black or white. Sometimes it's a little gray. But counsel helps us to see what we should do and what we shouldn't do. I think of St. Ignatius Loyola, whose discernment of spirits and spiritual exercises helps prepare us to be able to make the decision in the moment what to do and what not to do. That's counsel right there. The fifth gift of the Holy Spirit is fortitude, which is courage. They're synonymous with each other. But I like to think of fortitude as perseverance and trust, despite any fears of dangers, of discouragement, or danger. And Fortitude, I think, is best exemplified in many saints, the martyrs, but in a special way in St. Monica. She was praying daily to God for the conversion of her son and of her husband to come to the faith. She persevered despite all discouragement, despite the fact that it looked like they were never going to convert, that she prayed daily. And for those that know her story, know that her son is the great Saint Augustine. She persevered. She had fortitude and prayed to God, she trusted in him. That's the gift of fortitude right there. The sixth gift of the Holy Spirit is piety, which is not just praying every day when I'm supposed to pray, just kind of going through the motions. That's not piety. It's good to pray every day, of course. But a piety is that gift that helps us to see God as who he is, our Father, and who we are, his children. I think it's exemplified in the figure of Saint Therese, the little flower, who described prayer as an opportunity to, to sit with Jesus in the arms of her loving Heavenly Father. And it's a perfect imagery to trust in that Father. She sat in his arms. That's that filial trust that's part of piety, to see God as a loving Father, a generous Father, a good, good Father. That's piety. And the last gift of the Holy Spirit is fear of the Lord, which isn't just hiding at the chance of running into God out of fear, scared. No, 
He wants us to come to him. The fear of the Lord is having that reverence, that understanding of who God is and who we are. It's very related to piety. Peter Kreeft, who's a professor over at Boston College, says one of the best summaries of the faith is God is God, we are not. And that's fear of the Lord right there. That's that reverence of he is God. I'm not. I have that respect, that adoration, that awe of who he is. And that other part of fear of the Lord is a rejection of anything that keeps us from him. I think of the figure of St. Paul, who oftentimes in his letters said, I do the things that I do not want to do, and I hate the fact that I do them. He realized that these things that he kept on doing were keeping him from God, and that's fear of the Lord. It's realizing that God deserves our respect, our love, our total selves, and anything that keeps us from that. The gift of fear of the Lord helps us to not listen to those things, to put those aside. So those are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're ways to help us to live, both here on earth, in light of our call that all of us have to holiness, to heaven, so how do we receive these gifts of the Holy Spirit? Like if I can think of three instances where we can receive them in very tangible ways. The first is in baptism, which is why I'm here at St. Mary's in front of the sacred prison, which anoints us at baptism. That's when the gifts of the Holy Spirit are originally poured into us. We receive them then. And then in confirmation, years later, we receive them in a new way, in a greater way. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are really expanding in us. And then the third way, which I think is the most important right now to think about, is on our own prayers. We can ask for these gifts. Just like as a kid, you would make a Christmas list of gifts that you wanted your parent to give you. We can make a list of the gifts that we want God to give us. There's a scene in the Gospels where Jesus is walking along the road. And he encounters a blind man. And he says to him, what is it that you desire? And of course the blind man says, I want to see. But Jesus asks him that to remind him and to remind us of the importance of asking him for what we want. He knows what we want. He knows what we need. But he wants us to ask him, to beg him for what we want, for what we need. So let's beg him. Let's ask him for these gifts of the Holy Spirit. He's so good. He's so generous. He will give them to us if we ask. And I associated all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit with a saint. So, whichever of those seven you felt you really need an increase of, ask God, oh God, send your Holy Spirit, give me an increase of blank. And then you can ask that saint, whether Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity, John Paul II, whoever, to intercede for you. All these saints and angels are up in heaven making intercession for us, adoring God. So let's ask them for their help. Let's beg God for what we want and what we need, and he will give them to us. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, giver of all gifts, we thank you for these gifts of the Holy Spirit, these opportunities to help us to live perfectly, as Jesus calls us to in the Gospel. These perfect our calling, these bring us closer to heaven, closer to holiness. Mother Mary, the perfect example of living out all these gifts, we ask in particular for your intercession today, all the days preparing for Pentecost, and all the days of our life, as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.